Hey YouTube, it's your history teacher here, Mr. Terry. Today we are going to go check out some more history memes. So how this works, if you haven't seen my previous history memes videos, is over on our Discord server, which if you haven't joined, definitely check it out. It'll be linked down below. Uh, memes are collected that people have submitted in things. They, uh, My mods, they get them together, put them into a place that I can react to them. So that's what we're going to do today. And I guess the idea is... I can explain if I know what they're about. Sometimes they're pretty obscure stuff, I'll be honest, that it's like, I don't know, you teach me. So if we have those opportunities, uh, feel free to do so. All right, with that, though, let's go ahead and uh, we'll get started here. Let's pull up. So I haven't seen any of these. And let's see what we got. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, sleep time. Are you going to sleep? Yes, I am. Now shut up. What if everyone who still supports you is actually a traitor to the revolution? Oh, this Maximilian Robespierre. <laughs> All right, so we got Robespierre. He's kind of seen as like the leader of the French Revolution there. And famously with him, he was the leader of the interestingly named Committee of Public Safety, which essentially turned into a group that went out and tried to find people that were seemingly not supportive of the revolution or not revolutionary enough and famously were put to death. Um, tens of thousands of people were put to death just by like guillotine alone. And he was kind of the mastermind. Now the famous story with Robespierre though, was that he, for many, possibly many reasons, but a lot of people say he was almost mad with power. He ended up turning on people that were part of the revolution with him. And, some of them started going to the guillotine, like people that went up through the revolution with him and people were thinking he was getting paranoid. <laughs> so I think that's what's in reference to. Now, interestingly, Robespierre was also put to death by the same device, the guillotine, which he had sent so many people. So there's some irony to that. All right. Good stuff. <laughs> you know, all those thoughts we get when uh, we're late at night. Oh, I said no small memes. Ban this mod. All right. Is this India? <laughs> so we got Columbus here, as you could probably tell. It's the whole northern or sorry, western hemisphere. And famously, you know, he's trying to get to India to circumvent going around Africa um, or needing to go through Africa, which interestingly, I always I always found was interesting was Columbus did this voyage going west to try to get to India before anybody had actually sailed all the way to India around the southern tip of Africa, which was Vasco da Gama. So he did this actually before. So it's kind of interesting that he thought this could still be a more plausible journey to take before even knowing really how long of a trip around Africa could be, right? And if you know what his big thing was, was he thought the earth was a lot smaller than everybody was saying, which basically every cartographer and uh, was telling him, no, it's, you're crazy. It's, you know, it, it's, it's not like that. And luckily with uh, Columbus, he nailed the Americas or outside of there in the Caribbean area. Otherwise his people wouldn't, they would never have survived if there was no continent or any kind of landmass out West in the Atlantic, they wouldn't have survived anyways. So, <laughs> all right. Awesome. All right, back to the thing. Uh, what do we got here? Let's pull this one up. 1916, Easter Rising, the British Empire during World War One. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, what you get here, I guess, is, you know, the British, a lot of things were going on during, you know, in uh, in uh, uh, World War One, And um, actually, I just want to expand this to more than Britain. But, yeah, there's all kinds of things that could go on during the attention that it would take for, a country to fight something like these world wars. You know what I mean? I mean, look at like the uprisings going on uh, that were going on in Russia, for example, and having to fight a war during that, it can definitely turn your attention, right? <laughs> oh gosh, what do we got here? Let's blow it up. Okay, that's better. <laughs> 
okay so if you notice all this all this is like treaty of paris or paris peace treaty or something like that look at all the dates we got like 1229 1355 1623 1259 1323 you get the idea here it's true there's so many treaty of paris parises it seems like that was just like the place where you make treaties you know you go to paris i mean a couple famous ones of course the treaty of versailles which they had the paris peace conference end of world war one but you can see all those other ones big one for uh, american history would be the treaty of paris uh, that officially sort of ended the revolution or it granted british i guess uh, acceptance of american independence so for americans that's the one that people talk about but look how many there are i like the uh i like the the the, like spider-man pointing at each other one one of my favorite ones is where it's one of them is istanbul and one of them's constantinople and they're like pointing at each other that way i always like that one a lot there are a lot of treaties of paris that's for sure Right, I would get deja vu in teaching, like in my history classes. I'm like, yeah, all right, and the Treaty of Paris ended this war, and then the Treaty of Paris ended this thing, and they're like, wait, what? <laughs> all right, 1920, U.S. government, we did it. We finally banned alcohol in the entire country. Cheers, I'll drink to that, bro. <laughs> all right, so you got the, um, uh, you got prohibition in America. So if you didn't know, there was a time period in the 20s, actually, and then it went even further. But known as prohibition, um, what that was was the banning of alcohol in America. And if you didn't know that, and you're not an American, you're like, uh, what the heck? Kind of interesting because a big kind of I don't know if you want to call it some really civil rights movement necessarily, but a, a social movement was happening starting about 1918, 1919, um, and it had to do with uh, women um, specifically. Because one thing that happened is you know 1919 and the 1920. This is right after World War One. And one of the big social effects World War One had in a lot of countries, not just America, was the role that women had in the war as they were, you know, doing more manufacturing, getting out of the house, basically running the countries back at home while, you know, men were off fighting at war and things like that. And that was in a way almost kind of used as leverage to show that women's rights and women's issues need to be taken more seriously so like for example the the that year before that 1919 um in the united states uh, allowed women to vote right you got that movement which got passed and i think world war one had a lot to do with that too but one of the other things and a lot of this happened the the movement to ban alcohol in america came from a couple sources one was from women uh, because women believed it was basically turning a lot of their husbands a lot of men into pretty much monsters as they this is the industrial era, by the way, industrial revolution era or kind of late part. And because of the hardships of working factory life and all that stuff, a lot of men turned to alcohol and were, you know, getting drunk. And of course, you know, drinking in that kind of situation could lead to domestic abuse. So one of the big things was that a lot of women were saying men are coming home. They're getting just completely drunk coming home. And it's ruining their family lives. They're, you know, uh, there's uh, uh, yeah, domestic abuse of hitting their women, uh, wives and children and stuff like that. Then the religious community also kind of was about that too, saying, you know, it was leading to sinful behavior. So it's kind of interesting though, just for the fact that it is it is an interesting social experiment because it became a constitutional amendment and eventually gets repealed in the Great Depression uh, for a couple of reasons. Because one thing is that uh, during the Great Depression, money was hard to come by. And one thing you can do with alcohol is tax it. So they weren't taxing it. Plus, there was such a big effort to make basically illegal alcohol, moonshine, or smuggling it in from places like Canada that people were able to circumvent that anyways, which probably resulted in like millions of dollars of lost tax revenue. So eventually, yeah, it did get repealed. But it's an interesting social um, experiment that I, I used to talk a lot in my U.S. history class of what role, if any, should government play in trying to legislate morality and to what levels, right? Anyway, I know you're here for the memes, right? Let's get more to memes. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? Is this from Aragorn? It is. He always uses this because he's got a full gas mask, <laughs> a big, like a World War One gas mask suit and stuff. World War One. When the Germans use gas, but it's 1917 and you all got gas masks. 
There you go. He even cop did he even copyright himself. This was a picture. He's one of my mods. He took a picture of himself and then did that. Yeah, Germans introduced gas in World War One, and then the British started using it. And of course, the counter to that was gas masks, which are terrible to wear, but obviously better than the uh, alternative. But <laughs> interesting. Yeah, that way. Yeah, that's a little bit about gas. And then, of course, it was supposed to be banned after that, but it makes appearance every once in a while. All right, what do we got here? When you jump into the German trench... Wait, I'm sorry. When you jump into the German trench shotgun in hand... Hello there. <laughs> yeah, they had uh, shotguns um, were kind of... They were pretty good uh, trench gun because you needed something because it was a shorter distance, maybe a little more spread because of how quick you'd have to be. So they often call those like trench guns. There's kind of a version of that. And yeah, that became, you know, in there. So you got it. This is a British soldier here. He's got his, what they call Bobby helmets or whatever. So you pop right in. Hello. Star Wars, man. My community loves Star Wars. All right. The Great War is the war to end all wars. Well, yes, but actually no. <laughs> so people thought, right? They called it the Great War because they thought it was, just, you know, it was obviously, well, even as it was happening, was the biggest war that had ever happened. And people thought this is the war to end all wars. All the problems will be solved. But there's a problem when you have a war that didn't start for very good reasons and basically solved no issues. Hence, World War II. So I don't think, I don't think we're going to see that phrase much anymore. The war to end all wars. I think we're far more, I think, cynical about it now. Oh, gosh, here we go. Grand Duchy of Lithuania, 14th century Belarus and Ukraine. People forget, like, how powerful Lithuania was in, I guess, what you'd call the Middle Ages. And then it basically goes away. The Russian Empire pretty much absorbs it. Then it gets independence again, um, the whole Baltic states region after World War One. But people kind of forget about that, that you, yeah, the, the, the sort of, yeah, Grand Duchy of Lithuania, it was, it was a powerful um, entity for quite a long time. I like the, I like the, so th is this, wait, what, was this an actual like sandstorm from somewhere? Where is this? Like Arizona? And there was a dog. Dude, dog sandstorm. That's scary. That dog looked actually pretty cute. All right. Oh, we got the office. Love my office memes. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. 19th century mine owners. They're the, the mine owners. They're the same picture. Child labor. So you got co-workers and then you got children. And they were one and the same. So one of the famous things about the Industrial Revolution was the need for coal. Coal is what you use to power machines. It was what you use to smelt um, iron. So it was the most important energy product uh, for, for the Industrial Revolution. And because wages were so low in the Industrial Revolution, children, you saw more and more children having to work with their families. And one of those places, of course, or one of those industries was coal mining. So you could pay these kids less. And there's certain jobs that they might be better at doing, especially ones that came or that required going into a small space, which is also pretty dangerous. But yeah, they liked the higher kids. They were cheaper. You could manipulate them pretty easy and they could do a lot of dangerous jobs. In factories, you know, they could climb up into the machines and pull out jams and do all that kind of stuff. So kind of frightening to think about now. All right, what do we got here? Ooh, China. Okay, so almost looks like Republic of China here. He's walking. Is this just for? Oh, he's holding. Okay, holding, holding the sun. I'm gonna need some context on this. Stepping, and he's falling, and then that's what the the flag ends up looking like. Is that like how they think the the flag came to be? Tripped on a rock, and then it like flew up there. <laughs> if there's more context to this, let me know. I can't see. Okay. Oh, gosh. Anubis. He's one of my mods. Did he do one about himself? Yo, what up? It's your boy Anubis. Back at it again with another soul unboxing video. Now, as you can see, this one is a little heavier than a feather, which longtime fans of the channel will know is really bad. <laughs> so Anubis, he's part of like judging the soul in the uh, for the afterlife of... Egyptian mythology and they use this thing where they had a scale and they had 
a heart versus a feather. And it represented, I think, kind of like your deeds in life. And if it's outweighed, then, you know, you get to, I think it fed to that great crocodile character. What was his name? You get, like, if you, yeah, if you don't make it, you get thrown to the crocodile. Ah, what was his name? I forgot his name. I'm sure we're going to get a whole bunch of angry comments now, but <laughs> pretty good. And I'm glad Anubis. Is that who he thinks he is, my mod Anubis? <laughs> All right, what do we got here? We got United States and Soviet Union holding Germany there in a, oh, is it like a, oh, it's Captain America too. Chris, uh, whatever his name is, the Chris's, rips it apart. Oh, and then it's two Germany. Okay, I get it. So after World War II, it was decided that Germany would not just be left to its own future, like World War I. It was basically throw out these punishments on them, semi-enforce them, and then get out of there. No, World War II is different. They're like, all right, we're sick of Germany doing this if you're the Allied perspective. We're going to oversee this. So they divided up the nation um, that would end up being controlled by the United States, Britain, and France, generally all under the kind of the same type of rule. So basically it's West and East. Um, Because East Germany would then be overseen by Soviet Union, which developed into uh, part of the the, the kind of communist state. So, yeah, they split them up. So they split them up into the East and West Germany. And we'll be like that for decades there. Nice. Egypt attacks Israel. Israel, call the ambulance. But not for me. Oh, because Israel defeated Egypt in the um, in the war. Yeah, so one of the famous things that's happened in somewhat modern history, basically ever since World War II, uh, the official creation of um, Israel under the UN, and then repeated attempts or repeated wars between Israel and the Arab world. And Israel kind of came out every time having defeated these countries, again, like Egypt there. I don't know what this is from, though, like the, the, like the picture itself. Call the ambulance, but not for me. <laughs> I get like what it's saying, but what's that from? I don't know what that's from. All right, what do we got? Britain. You, Britain and France. Okay, you have, wait, we have you three to one. Egypt, Israel. I like those odds. Nice. Is this more, I guess, in reference to uh, the mandates? So after World War One, when the Ottoman Empire fell... And then, I guess, even into World War II era, um, they basically took the Ottoman Empire and then carved it up into mandates that would be overseen by the British and French. And that's a whole other story about how some of those people were betrayed because they, uh, a lot of the people internally, you can look at like the Lawrence of Arabia story, where you had these Arab groups that were fighting for. Or fighting alongside like the British and hope they would get independence. And then when the war happens, of course that doesn't happen. But Egypt uh, will get their independence. And interestingly, the Egypt and the Cold War is also an interesting thing, as they were able to like. I mean, it's a little bit off topic, but basically able to put the kind of uh, the, the bigger nations against each other. Um, it's pretty brilliant. Look into that with um, Gamal Abdel, Abdel Nasser, who's kind of the the father of like the modern egypt um, interesting the cold war politics of egypt look into that sometime all right what do we got? america in the vietnam war you've joined a losing match late in progress a loss will not be recorded <laughs> so a lot of people don't know especially if you're an american that the vietnam war if you want to call it that isn't just in reference to when americans show up because it really goes back to world war one uh when Places like uh, like in Egypt, they were hoping that with the fall of these empires, that World War One would kind of be the end of empires as we know it. And Vietnam was colonized by France. And they were forcing a place like Germany to give up other colonies and get independence. You got the self-determination happening all over Eastern Europe. But those that self-determination of creating your own nation did not take place in really any of the colonies on the Allied side. So they thought it was pretty hypocritical. So that... That uh, kind of move for independence really started with that. And then even after World War II, um, the French were still holding on to Vietnam. And that's when, if you want to call it, the war begins, which was fight for Vietnamese independence from France. And famously, the Vietnamese defeated France, uh, which was pretty, pretty big thing. Just to have you this mighty 
you know, large nation like France and Vietnam was able to, with their guerrilla warfare, able to defeat that. And then once, uh, once that happened, then you start getting the formation of like a, a Vietnamese government system. And that is when talks about um, adopting communism came in. And with the French out, there was no one really capable, I guess, of potentially putting pressure on Vietnam to not adopt communism. Enter then America, which kind of had this policy that communism should not spread anywhere else in the world. Then America joins, right? So you have the Civil War. That happens with Vietnam between the people that wanted sort of communism and then the people that didn't. So you get like Ho Chi Minh versus Ngo Dinh Diem. Um, in that civil war, America joins the civil war on the side of the non-communist, if you will, thus continuing the war. So Vietnam was fighting France and then a civil war with themselves. And then um, the uh, northern Vietnam, which was the part adopting communism, was fighting against the United States. And then once the Americans basically get beat out, then the Civil War, if you want to call it, continues not for very long, and then it's unified. So the Vietnam War lasted decades, decades, um, without America um, involved there, and was a losing effort. All right, what do we got? Poland, 1683. I just relieved Vienna. Poland, 1944. I just resisted Nazi occupation. Nice, big boy Poland. You know, Poland, what a rough history. Basically being torn between Eastern and Western Europe. You got Germany creeping in from the West forever. Then you got Russia coming in from the East and um, all the other nations that have come, come and gone there. But always having to resist. Always. It's like the history of Poland. It's just resistance for their entire history. I would have got, when France was built, the Maginot Line... Wait, when France has built the Maginot Line, but you invade a country to go around it. Improvise, adapt, overcome. Yeah, that's what the Germans did, as you guys know. In Germ Germany in World War I, the Germans went around the French and German border to get to... Uh, German-French border, did I say that right? Uh, German and French border to uh, through Belgium to get to France. And then did the same thing in World War II. The big thing, you guys probably know what the Maginot Line is, but the basically most fortified defense structure ever constructed by humans was built along the French and German border, but didn't extend any further north than that along the French and Belgian border. Um, Belgium and France were friends and allies, but... Germany saw that just like in World War One, it's a little bit easier to get to northern France, which is where Paris is, by going somewhere like Belgium, which isn't going to be as defended. And that's what they did, basically largely avoiding the Maginot Line pretty much completely. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Let's say made by me. Aragorn's making one. All right, let's see what we got here. It's going to be a Norwegian meme because that's what he does. When you're the Nor when you're the first Norwegian to die during the German invasion because you refuse to surrender and warn of the coming fleet and barely anyone remembers you. Sad leaf welding Olsen sounds. So we need to give more respect to him. I don't know who this is. Maybe all the Norwegians do, but he was the first one to go down. All right, Leaf. We'll give you your salute, your 07. There you go. <laughs> all right. What do we got? Roman citizens after Caesar kills one million Gauls and enslaves another million. Oh, no. Anyway, <laughs> is that one million? Is that true? That there are one million Gauls? I'd like to know the source for that. Let me know if you got it. Uh, one million and enslaves another million? That's interesting. Oh, no. Anyway, is that, is that kind of the joke there? It's like just startled for a second and then they're like nah whatever moving on <laughs> all right what do we got here is there a caption all right we just got someone hiding in the, with an ak in the bushes there basically just a helmet and uh, an ak they're saying this is like vietnam or something just totally hidden in bushes that would actually be kind of scary. Is this in a mall or something? I'm sure that thing got taken down by security fast. Michael Collins, Buzz Alder, Neil Armstrong. <laughs> I like this. So Michael Collins is the forgotten third member of the Apollo 11 crew, which was the first manned mission to the moon. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin famously landed on it while Mike, Michael Collins was the, the, the pilot up in, the, um, up in orbit or whatever, uh, where they dropped the pod off and... Just had to watch from afar while his two buddies get all the credit. So 
Let's not forget the great Michael Collins. <laughs> All right, what do we got next? Okay, what do we got? Okay, we got the United States. Wait, Russia, I can explain. So, Union, your revolutionary government is still standing. We only lasted 69 years. France, 69 years. Our republic only lasted 12 years. You guys win revolutions? <laughs> You're hungry. Um, so, yeah, like, uh, people don't understand, especially with the French one, that... With the French Revolution, the Republic did not last very long. A lot of people think that, okay, the French Revolution happened. They executed um, the king and queen, right? Louis XVI, Marie Antoinette, and then they were just a Republic forever. No, that family came back. Um, plus, you got like Napoleon's reign. Their Republic did not last very long. And then they have, there's other actual like revolutions, if you want to call it, that people don't really remember. But I mean, the, the big one in 1789 was obviously the one that, Kind of is going to stay fresh in memory, but yeah. <laughs> you guys went, yeah, and all revolutions uh, are victorious, though. All right, let's keep moving. When you host the Olympics to display Aryan supremacy, but a black guy wins every race. Adolf had never seen such bull crap before. All right, so we got um, Jesse Owens, right? So they, they had the Olympics in 1930. What was that? 32, 34, 36. It was one of those. I forgot which exactly which year. And the Germans hosted it. And it said that Adolf Hitler, who had become chancellor then, was looking for the German Olympics to show Aryan superiority. They were going to win this, you know, win these Olympics against these inferior races. And famously, the American Jesse Owens came in and just dominated. And he was an African-American, just dominated, which <laughs> said that it was supposed to really show the flaw in this idea of Aryan supremacy uh, because people of African descent were one of the, uh, I think, the, the, the people that Adolf Hitler and his, his like-minded group thought were inferior peoples. But then you saw someone like Jesse Owens who just kicked German butt all over the place. So great, interesting part of not just sports history, but kind of social history right there. I already got this is Rudolf Hess. He edited Mein Kampf for Adolf Hitler. That makes him the first grammar Nazi. Oh, Hess. He was one of the big guys that ended up. Was he was he one of the ones that actually got the death penalty in um, um, after the war? At the trials. I don't remember. He was one of the big ones. But yeah, edited uh, Mein Kampf, which uh, Hitler had basically dictated and wrote in jail. And then basically becomes a, a handbook in a way of ideologies for the Nazi party. Was well, right. I think Hess was part of the Nuremberg trials at the end there. Anyway, because uh, I mean, the, the Nuremberg trials, you had some people were put to death. Some actually committed suicide. Um, some got imprisonment. Some actually got acquitted, but yeah. Anyways. All right. Frank, uh, Franklin D. Rose or yeah. Franklin D. Roosevelt. So we got FDR. I fear no man. But that, but that thing, fear itself, it scares me. So that was the famous uh, quote that FDR said was, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. So he fears no man, but he does fear fear. <laughs> All right, a few more left, it looks. Okay, Scandinavian, Scandinavians, after realizing that Mars hasn't been pillaged yet. <laughs> so we got, we got like Viking spaceships here. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that's really good. The Vikings are going to space, man. They're they're going out and they're going to go pillage Mars. I'm not sure what they think they're going to find there, but <laughs> that's great. What if we did just have this resurrection of Vikings and they became like space Vikings? That'd be pretty neat. <laughs> All right, we got here. Russia and Austria creating the third coalition. Okay, so Russia and Austria. So Russia, Austria. Okay, Napoleon defeating of them at Austerlitz. <laughs> so he got a gun and then pulls out a bazooka there. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean Napoleon, man, he defeated a lot. I was looking at something recently, like an article um, about winning percentages of generals, and you know Napoleon gets a lot of crap for the Russian invasion, but his win percentage was pretty amazing when you looked at how big these nations were, and that he fought against, but also that there were coalitions of multiple nations that he was often fighting, which was pretty impressive. 
All right, the Union and Confederate armies are almost equal. Robert E. Lee is like, yes. Abraham Lincoln calls for 500,000 more Union soldiers, Robert E. Lee. Yeah, they kept getting more soldiers. That's one thing that the North had was definitely some manpower. Um, the Northern States in the American Civil War. If you don't know, Robert E. Lee was the general of the um, uh, Confederate States. Those are the ones that were seceding and fighting for what they would say their, their independence. And then um, Lincoln, who was president of the United States and basically of the North, yeah, they were able to out produce and outman them eventually, leading to a slow demise of the Confederacy. All right, when America gives out, when America gives out about America for its cruel treatment of the natives, act natural. Yeah, <laughs> so the Canadians, yeah, and Australians. So yeah, that's one of the things that people talk about is the the basically genocide and cruel treatment that happens in the U.S. for the many different Native Americans, American groups. But the stories are very similar in places like Canada or Australia, with Canada having, you know, um, up there was, uh, with more Native groups than over in Australia with the Aboriginal groups. Uh, happens in some brutal fashion as well. A lot of people maybe don't realize that, realize that as much, that the whole treatment of kind of colonists versus their Natives was such a big deal, even in you know, the modern era. Of course, you talk about that with the conquistadors, Hernan Cortez, Pizarro, and the guys that came over from Spain to um, to the Americas. But what was going on in other places? Yeah, like all of North America and then in Australia. It's, it's just a, a tale of colonialism and imperialism that's happened. All right, I think that was it. All right, awesome. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed another history memes video. Hopefully I was able to get them things. Hopefully you can teach me some things on ones that maybe I didn't clear, uh, talk about clear enough. It's amazing how memes can be an instructional kind of thing. I do always have to caution, though. Memes are not historically researched history. I see all kinds of memes that they embellish or are simply just not true. So make sure if you hear about one of these stories, you know, that go ahead and look it up. Use you you can use memes as a way to sort of launch into more legitimate research, right? And yeah, it can get you going. Like if you see some kind of crazy story and be like, hey, I want to actually look that up and look at more peer-reviewed sources and stuff like that. So don't use it as a teaching tool necessarily, as a way to get interested into something and then go a little bit deeper um, that way. And that's one of the great things to do. Uh, but thank you yeah, for for doing that. Thanks to everyone that was posting memes in the discord server so if you're not a discord member and you're into history memes you got a good collection of something we want to see them um so if you become a discord member the link is down below there's a channel where you can put memes and what the mods do on discord is pull some of those and put them into a place that i can see them so they kind of filter through and then you know i make these videos and kind of react to them so Anyways, good stuff there. I think a lot of good teaching opportunities, like we said. Hopefully it gets you more interested. But, yeah, thank you for um, being here on the way out. There's links to other things down below. Uh, my new gaming channel, which I guess it's still new, is linked down below. Um, things if you want some cool history merch, we got some stuff for Teespring. Link down below is what that. If you want to support the channel, I'm specifically and able to, to – uh, get videos featured on the channel for my reactions. You can join our Patreon. I do a weekly poll. Lots of different things um, to be a part of the history community here. All right, and with that, we'll see you guys all next time. Bye.